right, it's 2.03. Okay, well, let's get started. We're really excited to have everyone join us um, to this webinar, say yes to reusables and reusable foodware is what we're talking about today. Um, so uh, my name is Grace Lee. I'm the program director of Rethink Disposable, which is a source reduction program of the national nonprofit Clean Water Fund. Um, we have several team members as well on. Uh, we have Dean Chong from Rethink Disposable. Um, and we also have Jamie now Cooley um, from the city of Fremont, Steph Prugel from Stop Waste, Alma Freeman from Stop Waste, and Justin Lear also from Stop Waste. So thank you everyone for joining us today and all the participants as well. Um, just uh, kind of some highlights. Um, if you've just joined, please put your name and your affiliation um, and your pronouns into the chat and comments should go into the chat. But if you have any questions that you want us to answer throughout the webinar, um, we'll also have a Q&A section at the end of the webinar or towards the end. Um, please put your questions in the Q&A box so we can just make sure that we have those logged and we can address as many as possible as we can. Um, but definitely if we don't get to all of the questions, we'll be emailing everyone to follow up. So we'll be able to answer some of those after the webinar. Um, and then I think everyone is muted. Um, so I think we're good there. Um, am I missing anything else, Steph, about just like general housekeeping? I think you got it. Okay, great. Wonderful. Okay, so just a quick rundown for what's going to happen today. Um, uh, I'm going to do a brief presentation about Rethink Disposable and the services that we provide to businesses. Um, and then we are going to talk about um, what we have accomplished in Alameda County. So the, the whole point of the webinar is really to highlight the work that has been done in partnership between Clean Water Fund and Stop Waste, and to really look at how reusable foodware can benefit businesses during a global pandemic. I mean, it's just, yes, yeah, so we have a lot of questions behind that, and we'll get into that in a subsequent presentation. Um, so we, we are happy to share our accomplishments um, and uh, we also will be hearing from Justin, who will talk a little bit more about um, the regional effort and the role of the public agency in support of business engagement. Um, we'll be hearing from Jamie Cooley, who is going to be talking a little bit about the city of Fremont's um, participation also in partnership in this program. Um, and then we are going to show a short um, well, it's nine minutes, or actually eight minutes, but um, it's a short documentary about um, highlighting two of the business owners that we had an amazing opportunity to work with. Um, and then we're going to hear from Jimmy um, and also Dean Chuang, and they are calling in from the city of Fremont's Aqua Adventure Water Park. Um, so we'll get a chance to meet Jimmy and hear from him directly um, as a, a business um, um, management. Um, and then, you know, we'll wrap it up with some call to actions, Q&A, um, and some announcements at the very end. That sound good to everyone? <laughs> Excellent. All right. So we're going to just jump into the presentation. Um, and so I'll start with Rethink Disposable, and then we'll move on to what we accomplished in Alameda County. So let me share my screen. Get everything situated. Okay, here we go. All right. So some of you on this webinar may have seen this presentation before. Um, it is a quick rundown of Rethink Disposable and the services we provide to businesses. Um, so just some history um, behind the program. Um, Rethink Disposable is a program of the non National Nonprofit Clean Water Fund. We started more than a decade ago, um, and it all kind of started even before Rethink Disposable was a glimmer in the eye. Um, uh, Clean Water Fund conducted a municipal litter survey um, throughout the Bay Area. 
we picked up a bunch of trash in four different cities in the Bay Area, and we studied the um, type of trash and we characterized the trash. And what we found was pretty shocking, that almost 70% of the litter that we picked up was food and beverage packaging. So we looked at this problem and then we, you know, really looked at what would be an effective solution to getting that trash out of um, the uh, street litter. And, you know, that and usually ends up as um, marine debris or um, just in the environment. And we created Rethink Disposable to address the problem at the source. So cleanups are very important. But what we wanted to do was address the litter problem at the source, so we didn't even need to clean it up at the end. So Rethink's Disposable started. Um, to date, we've worked with about 300 small to medium-sized businesses, so cafes, restaurants, um, noodle houses, pizza places. Um, and we've also worked with 13 institutions like Genentech, um, Microsoft, um, and uh, a couple school districts. So we're really glad to you know, have expanded from just an itty bitty project to now um, you know, being nor in Northern and in Southern California. Um, we're also looking at um, a national strategic um, expansion plan. So hopefully we'll get to the East Coast very, very, very soon and everything in between. Um, to date, um, we are eliminating more than 22 million individual pieces of disposable packaging every year through our work with small to medium businesses and also institutions. We do this through, um, actually this is kind of blocking. Okay, there we go. So we do this through um, technical assistance, um, working directly with food businesses. And you can see here, we have um, a couple of team members from actually the city of San Francisco's um, Department of Environment, Environment Now team um, on the right here. And so what we do is we sit down with business owners and we create a sustainability plan with them. Um, we figure out um, based on a list of rethink disposable um, best management practices, we choose which foodware to target for reduction and elimination through either behavior change or by switching from single use to reusable. Um, we find that this free technical assistance, so this happens at no cost to the business, is one way to remove a huge barrier to change. We um, also, for our busy restaurant participants, we handle product research, procurement, delivery, and setup. Um, we even um, are able to do staff training. So what we've found and what we've heard from our restaurants um, is that even if they wanted to be more sustainable, there is um, no time, right? So I've heard from many business owners that say, we can't even flip through a catalog to figure out which reusables that we want or, or what to switch you know, to. So we take care of all of that work for our restaurant partners. What we've found, um, which is quite amazing, and this was not even part of the idea when Rethink Disposal was started, um, but many people feel as if reusables will be a hardship for restaurants that will put them over the edge, maybe even put them out of business. But what we found is that the restaurants that we work with actually save a ton of money from switching to reusables. So a restaurant can save in the range of $3,000 to $22,000 in net cost savings. And this data is actually taken from our deep data dives, examining pro um, procurement of packaging um, to, to get these numbers. So a small to medium business what can save between $3,000 to $22,000 in net cost savings. And that accounts for labor, any additional water um, costs, um, installation of a commercial dishwasher, et cetera, et cetera. They are able to eliminate 115,000 disposable packaging items every year, which equates to 1,300 pounds of waste again every year. And restaurants are able to see an overall 60% reduction of targeted packaging items. So of the, of the foodware that we have um, pulled out to reduce or eliminate, they can on average 
60% of it is just no longer generated. And I keep saying annual and every year and things like that, but so what that means is that as long as the restaurant is sustaining their reusable foodware, they are able to see these savings and the reductions in trash. So most of it being plastic um, and other um, single use disposables. And I'm not sure if Rich Grousset is on this call, but um, he is um, credited to a amazing, amazing number. Nearly 1 trillion pieces of disposable foodware and packaging items are used by US food service businesses every year. So not only is Rethink Disposable able to reduce, just put a dent in that 1 trillion number, but also saves businesses a ton, a ton of money. Um, labor and water is oftentimes um, a question that we get, you know, how about labor, especially now during the pandemic, it's really hard to find people to work at a restaurant. Um, this is just a quick snapshot of a case study um, that we have from the city of Alameda um, from Crispian Bakery. And what they found is that by switching, so Beth Wolf, the owner, switched from the paper plate to porcelain, you know, plate, plastic cup to a glass cup. Uh, Beth found that the switch to reusables was smooth and it wasn't hard, even though they might've had reservations in the beginning and their water has barely gone up, but it did go up. Um, installing a dishwasher improved labor efficiency. Um, they didn't need to hire any additional staff. The water bill did increase by $30 a month, but the cost of the dishwasher installation and rental was offset by the savings earned from the switching to reusables. So this is just one case study. We have several others on our website, rethinkdisposable.org um, that talk um, more about um, cost savings and um, waste reduction and also labor and water um, impacts as well. So this is a picture of our constellation of happy customers. So you can see we work with a diverse um, set of in types of restaurants um, any restaurant can benefit from reusables from a dim sum place, a coffee shop to a French pastry shop, um, even a yacht club that you'll see there. Um, and um, uh, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, not restaurants aren't the only ones that have happy customers. So we think disposable does as well. And we've been so honored to be able to work with all these people. Okay, so now, um, there is also the concern of the safety of reusables during COVID, right? So we get a lot of questions and concerns about, is it safe? Um, what we do in Alameda County um, is that we share Stop Waste amazing flyer. Um, oh gosh, and I think my Zoom um, box is covering the top part, but it says this guidance was developed by Stop Waste in partnership with the Alameda County Department of Environmental Health. So this flyer, um, and this is what we use in the field when we're talking to restaurants and they do have a concern about reusables and, and COVID. Um, we're able to use this flyer to let them know that the health department deems it safe. Um, and the flyer was created in line with the CDC and FDA um, requirements and guidelines with COVID and foodware. So it is safe, it is allowed, and it's definitely encouraged. All right, so what did we do in Alameda County? Um, you know, our, our main project, right, was to see if, is business engagement, what did it look like during a global pandemic? So we asked ourselves, and we we're set out actually to ask these big overarching questions. Is asking a restaurant to serve with reusable foodware a burden during this shared global pandemic experience? Are restaurants able to serve with reusable foodware and thrive as a business or will it put them over the edge? Are there restaurants even interested in shifting to reusable foodware for dine-in and or takeout, right? Can we even find restaurants that wanna work with us? So uh, we set out to answer those questions. Um, so Stop Waste and Clean Water Fund work together um, to set this project scope and we gave ourselves a year. So May, 2021 to today, May 31st, 2022. 
to look at, um, to provide outreach, education, and technical assistance in collaboration with three amazing partner cities. So city of Oakland, Pleasanton, and Fremont. And we'll hear from the city of Fremont later today. Um, our, okay, so the budget and the scope was modest because we just wanted to do a little test, you know, a little uh, proof of concept, right? Um, we wanted to engage 10 to 12 food service operators to reduce disposable food service packaging and transition over to reusable alternatives. We set a prebate of $500 in the contract. So what that means, so what that means is that, um, and this is throughout most of the work that we do in Rethink. So all of our budgets, we have a pass through that goes directly back to the community. And we set typically between $300 to $600 to purchase the reusable foodware for the restaurant. So there's no out of pocket cost or upfront investment for the restaurant. So for Stop Waste, we're able to do that with a $500 prebate because we buy it ahead of time for them. We just take care, take care of it for them. And we also shared information on the safety of reusables during the pandemic um, via the Stop Waste flyer. Um, and we also wanted to look at potential candidates for pilot projects utilizing third-party reusable services for dine-in or takeout, right? So we wanted to even push the envelope even further. And this is what happened. So for the city of Oakland, um, we have a featured restaurant and that you will be seeing a little bit more about in the uh, mini documentary. So Cam Ann Deli. So Miss Ann here on the right, um, a wonderful individual. Uh, we switched over the plastic um, container and the utensils over to all reusables. Um, the setup cost was about $477 to set her up for 100% reuse operation. And we did a deep dive into their invoices um, and procurement of disposable packaging. And we found that they will be saving $1,799 every year and eliminating 32,140 disposable packaging items every year, which equates to 861 pounds of trash avoided. We also got a wonderful opportunity to work with Sweet Bar Bakery and to support Pamela's um, switch to all reusable takeout with dispatch goods. And here, Jimmy, we have a picture of Jimmy Dilks from Aqua Adventure. You'll be hearing from him as well in a second. Um, we've worked with Aqua Adventure, a city run water park in the city of Fremont to completely switch over their disposables to reusable packaging. And I won't go too much more in that because I'll let, I'll let Jimmy and Dean talk about this more. Um, but you'll see here kind of the highlight of that project is that we switched them over to reusable pizza boxes. So really exciting. Um, we also worked with Mediterranean Bite, Gators and Taqueria Limon. In Pleasanton, um, we focused our efforts on the Main Street um, busy uh, business corridor. And we um, did something simple. So Main Street Brewery was almost all 100% um, reus reusable, um, except for their sauce cups, right? So we, go, we went ahead and just switched those out. So cost 100 bucks. They'll be saving 600, more, a little bit more than 600 a year from just that one switch, but they'll be eliminating 16,222 disposable packaging items every year, which is equivalent to 110 pounds of trash from just one switch. Um, we also worked with Namaste Pizza and Experience Burma. And we're happy to report that we actually have a waiting list for Rethink Disposable. So thanks to City of Fremont and Jamie's, uh, Jamie Cooley's connection to the temple. Um, we worked with um, Gurdara Temple. Um, we did a little discovery call and we hope to be working with them during the regional um, uh, strategy. So with Gurdara, with Godara, they on weekends, um, on weekdays, actually, they see between 500, 800 people um, on weekends. Each day can go up to a thousand visitors a day. Um, and then on holidays, they can see, you know, a massive amount of crowds coming to visit the temple. And what they do, what's really special about this temple is that every single person um, is able to get a meal 
at the temple. So um, we are helping them switch from their disposable packaging over to reusables. Because as you can imagine, a thousand meals over the weekend um, on each day could really generate a lot of, um, a lot of trash, a lot of uh, food packaging. So um, you can see that from a modest budget in our, our pilot target numbers, this is what we've been able to accomplish in Alameda County in the last 12 months. We're motivated to dive into a regional effort um, with Stop Waste, and I will kick it over to Justin Lair, who will speak to that now. Um, and if you don't know Justin, um, here's a little um, bio for Justin. Um, he is the operations manager at Stop Waste. Um, Stop Waste is a public agency in Alameda County who has been helping businesses, residents, and schools waste less, recycle better, and use water, energy, and other resources efficiently for over 40 years. Um, in their efforts to support Alameda County food businesses reduce waste, particularly single-use food and beverage packaging, Stop Waste has partnered with Clean Water Fund to implement Rethink Disposable since 2013, so we're a long time friends. Um, Justin has been leading the reusables movement for Stop Waste with the ultimate goal of transforming how we dine, as well as package our goods in a closed loop circular strategy, even beyond the food space. Thank you, Grace. Can you all hear me okay? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you. Um, we really value our partnership with Rethink Disposable. I think, Grace, you really laid out the background nicely, so I'll try not to be too repetitive. Um, but just really want to focus on our role as a public agency, in particular in Alameda County, what we're trying to accomplish and, and how we're proposing to work on this going forward. Um, so a lot of people, um, I'll skip the intro to stop waste because Grace covered it nicely, but we, we deal with residents and businesses and schools and a lot of a lot of these stakeholders come to us seeking answers, whether it's how to recycle items or prevent um, all manner of wasted items. And we've provided a lot of guidance over the years, particularly on foodware. Um, and in the process of doing so, we've seen firsthand how switching from a single use plastic cup um, or container to a compostable one that is still single use is not really the solution uh, that we're going for. Um, we've seen that compostables can introduce contamination to the recycling uh, when they're not sorted properly. They don't always break down at the compost facility. And on top of that, they cost more than traditional disposables. So all of that, those are really big contributing reasons why we are focusing our resources on reusable foodware. But having said that, reusables, um, it's a little bit, seems like more of a lift up front, especially to the businesses. Um, and some communities have approached this through policies, through ordinances, um, or other regulatory approaches. And I think that is an important part of the equation. But it, when we thought about this, in order to to, for foodware ordinances or other policies to truly be effective, there need to be options available. Um, and if we want to elevate reuse rather than kind of push toward disposable alternatives, we felt uh, that for Alameda County, we needed to have some readily available solutions for dine-in, for takeout, uh, for institutional dining, for meal delivery. There's really a lot of ground to cover. Um, so Stop Waste has been supporting this through um, a multi-pronged effort. Um, it includes outreach and it includes grant awards and through technical assistance. And um, in that technical assistance, which is where we're really working a lot with Rethink Disposable, um, within that technical assistance, we're focusing on providing that um, TA, short for technical assistance, and financial assistance to organizations of all types that can make the switch, and also toward attracting new service providers to our county. So we did an RFQ uh, in 2021 just to expand the landscape. Um, there's a handful of businesses operating in the reuse space, and there's others operating in other parts of the country and other parts of the world, and we wanted to kind of get on their radar and have them on our radar uh, with hopes that we can make some connections and help grow, grow this nascent industry in our part of the world. Um, so our work with Rethink Disposable, they are our primary TA partner in Alameda County and our feet on the ground. Um, they're equipped with the tools and the financial incentives as Grace was describing. 
and their expertise in this realm to support businesses in the county that are ready to make the switch. And now just a, like a word on public agencies. Um, I think that we, Stop Waste and other public agencies, cities, counties, um, play a really important role in building this reuse infrastructure. Um, so we're working closely with several of our, our member agencies. Grace mentioned Fremont, Pleasanton, and Oakland, and others as well, City of Alameda. Um, we're working with these, these jurisdictions to provide focused outreach in their community, and we want to work with more. So this can take shape a number of ways. Um, as a baseline, Stop Waste is developing a plan for technical assistance that will allow us to be responsive to opportunities countywide. But for those cities or, or jurisdictions that want to really do more focused outreach um, to identify and connect with the businesses and connect our team with them, you know, you all know your own, you, city folks know your cities best and know your businesses. So we really turn to you to help us kind of get those opportunities lined up so that the Rethink team can go in with the solutions and help them provide support. Um, so I guess a final pitch from me would be that if what you hear today sounds interesting, if you are interested in a more focused approach to this work in your jurisdiction, please reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat. Um, we have this opportunity in Alameda County. I wish I could offer it to a broader range, but um, that's where our funding comes from. And we've learned so much through this work. We're looking forward to really, now that we're out of the pandemic or kind of emerging into a new state of the pandemic, right? It's always evolving. And there, it seems like there are opportunities and we know that it's safe to use reusables and um, we're really eager to move forward on it. So I'll pause there. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Um, now we're gonna hear from Jamie from the city of Fremont. I have a bio for you. Do you want me to read it? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jamie Smith is an environmental specialist one at the city of Fremont and our main liaison with the city. Before that, Jamie was a waste prevention program assistant and was instrumental in providing structure and organization to their renegade team. Jamie is committed to addressing environmental issues, especially through the lens of environmental justice. She achieves this by utilizing various approaches, including education, community empowerment and outreach, grassroots organizing and policy. Rethink Disposable has had the pleasure of working with Jamie Smith and the city of Fremont over the last year. And we invite Jamie to speak to their city's involvement with the pilot Rethink Disposable pilot in Alameda County. Thanks, Grace. Hi, everybody. So. Um... I was really excited when Grace and Justin reached out to us saying that that Fremont was an option for trying out this pilot, especially during the pandemic. We weren't really sure how responsive businesses were gonna be since there's a lot going on, but they already felt overburdened. Do we wanna add this on top of that? And what we really found out was that this is a lot of businesses were receptive to this because it was this, we were, they were providing monetary assistance, doing all the, the hard work, like Grace was saying, like they don't have time to look at a catalog. That's what Rethink was there for, to do that work for them and then just bring them the items and then help them implement it. And so I really appreciated seeing that happen within Fremont and the businesses here and seeing that re how responsive everyone was and excited to try this and open to doing it, especially given the pandemic and not being sure about is this safe and having to make sure we communicate that as well. So businesses know this is something the city also supports. And we really see that even seeing that waiting list with the Gurdwara Temple, and I, I'm so excited. They're so, ex they have the all, like the best attitude about this. They've been wanting to do something for a while and we're just trying to find the right time to be like, and being able to give the, get them connected with Rethink Disposable and see that work and that energy being taken advantage of on the, with the temple and also at Aqua Adventure. I'm so excited to see what Dean and Jimmy talk about because I know we worked hard to make sure that we supported that, make sure the trash cans we put in had tray returns to support reusables. Um, we really tried to pivot to make sure that this was accommodated and moving forward as a city, we, were, we are the model for the community. So if our city, facilities are operate with mostly or all reusables. That's a good model for the rest of the community to follow. 
and I really am excited to see what we do moving forward. Thanks, Jamie. I know I definitely know that, um, like in the beginning of the pandemic, um, you know, Clean Water Fund and, and City of Fremont talked about, you know, can can reusables even happen? And so, and a lot of, I mean, that wasn't just the city of Fremont, it was a lot of people. So um, it's nice to see that we have made kind of progress in that, showing that it, it is totally possible. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, and for all of your connections too, to businesses, it's been super, super helpful. Okay, so now is the moment we've all been waiting for, at least for our team. Um, we are gonna play the video um, that we've made featuring two of our amazing business owners um, that we've had the opportunity to work with. So just as a little background, it might be a departure, a little departure from what you're used to, to seeing at a webinar. Um, and the point of the video is that, okay, so we've, we've heard a lot about what Rethink Disposable does and the benefits of reusables and et cetera, and how much money a, a business can save, um, how much trash you know, can be reduced. Um, but what gets lost kind of in those numbers and the data and, and that type of information are the backstories and the people that are, are making the programs possible. The businesses that we're helping to you know, save a little money so they can stay open a little bit longer. Um, and what we've you know, really wanted to champion um, the business owners that we work with. Um, I'm really, um, you know, it's it's money talks, but really the, the people are the program. Um, so I'm really excited. I can't wait for you all to meet Anne and Lena. Let me share my screen. Okay, here we go. In Southeast Asia, afternoon tea is quite a big deal. It's like a ritual and we all go for our afternoon tea, especially on the weekends. And I wanted to recreate that here. It also reminds me of home. Afternoon tea and then with my mom, all that. Especially afternoon tea in Malaya, you know, I want people when they come in, they are transported to a different time. You know, where everything is slower, it's me time, have tea, just enjoy the moment. As opposed to as a restaurant where you have to just eat and then you gotta go somewhere. Here, you make the time, it's two hours, you come here, you know you're spending two hours and a little bit more. Relaxing and enjoying drinking tea. Here, the ritual, I love it with, you know, even putting sugar cubes. You know, <laughs> putting milk and stirring your tea. And it has to be the fine china to your lips. You know, all that. It's just, in some way, meditating. We are located at 920 West Street, Oakland, Chinatown. Yay! And thank you so much for supporting us. And here we go. Hi, I'm on. Everyone have a dream. My dream was to own the restaurant. It didn't come that easy. I would just dream like one day. And I was lucky that just landing from Hong Kong as the refugee people to San Francisco. As soon as I landed in it, I was thinking about the same with the bunny. I just dream like one is so bad because living in Hong Kong in refugee camp for years, I, I would just dream like one day I will have a sandwich, I'd be happy and I'll be like, you know, I'm in heaven and my dream come true when my brother took me here. So I walked in here 
right at this place, at this restaurant, and I talked to the owner. I said, wow, this is so cool. This is a big dream. If, what if I own this restaurant? And guess what? It took me 28 years. She found me and she gave me the key that day and I tear in my eye. I said, what? She said, I'm done with the, my job now. It's your turn. Go and take care of the business. Chinatown needs you. So here I am. I grew up in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So growing up, my mom would bring me for afternoon tea. Back home is called high tea just because there's also more food involved. So we would go for afternoon tea as a mother-daughter. And even when we travel to Hong Kong or Singapore, neighboring countries, we would still look up for places for high tea, just because it's fun, you know, and we're creating memories. And then when I came to the US, there's not a lot of afternoon tea boutiques. And even though, even if there are some, they're usually very British style, cottage British style, a lot of flowers. But afternoon tea in Southeast Asia is for everyone. I wanted to bring that to Alameda, California. We've always wanted to do better, use more environmental friendly items. But I have to say it's expensive. So. It made it hot. Of course, you guys made it easy. Coming in, introducing yourself, giving us ideas what we can do, how we can replace stuff, helping us order. This is the best thing and we have been so blessed by the program and be able to use it and customers love it. The more important thing they love it because the food looks better. And when they look better, it tastes better. And you'll feel better when you eat it. And really highly recommend the program have been perfectly because after the COVID, everything just is practice. And it's not good for environment. And more than ever at this time, we need to save our environment. The better, the cleaner, it will be a much happier place to live. So why not use the program to save our environment. I highly recommend all the owner, hello, listen to me. You save money because if you just reuse them over and over and over, then you don't have to pay money for the paper. Your organization, it just make it easier. You know, you guys were able to order it for us. If it's really there, somebody's doing half of the job for you, then you really have no excuse. <laughs> right? You really have no excuse and you should definitely support this movement. And the chicken just came out from the oven. Look at that, woo, the smoky. This program should extend to the student as well. If you do the usable in the school, all the children will appreciate it more because give them the concept to learn how to save the earth and save the environment. So I think the whole world should use the reduce disposable program. Not all restaurants are able to have a commercial cleaning 40,000 kind of washing machine and there's no space to. It has to be a certain size. So that's really hard for small businesses. We can send our dishes away for somebody to wash and bring it in. That kind of company could help like a sandwich shop. It mainly it's just plates and bowls. You know, the, and, and if the county steps in or the city and as a part of a grant to help, even not the entire load, just a bit of it, I think that helps a lot. Like I said, I'm sure a lot of restaurants want to go towards that. But between hourly wages that we want to pay our staff, a decent living, livable wage, between that and paying your staff, you're going to go towards paying your staff. The environmentally friendly items become secondary. But if we have more help with that, like what you guys do, definitely. You know what? It's a blessing to have a restaurant and to run it. My favorite part is to serve community. And especially during the time of COVID, we serve the fun life and we serve a homeless. If you want to get through this COVID, saving every penny is work. And you can see, I can show you the, the number different. You can spend hundred, hundred dollars, especially after COVID, all the supply go up. This thing not cheap. This thing is hundred, hundred dollars. Every month I can prove it. Why save a thousand to give in the food and serve our community? Thank you very much. But never try, never know. So I highly recommend try it.
And it's going to work if we allow them to test the product. And I can't do this without you guys' support, so thank you. Please, this tea here, we made it for you guys. So please enjoy. There we have it. It was a documentary, Lena and Anne. I encourage everyone to go get a Bon Me from Camandeli and also Malaya Tea Room. Um, it books up really fast, so you have to make reservations <laughs> several weeks ahead of time. <laughs> but um, wonderful, wonderful people um, and such great spokes spokespersons for, for reusables. Um, now we have live <laughs> from the city of Fremont in Aquadenture. Jimmy, I've taken you away from all of your busy um, high school students today. So thank you so much, so much for joining us um, live from Aquadenture. So Dean, I'll let you take, take it away. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Grace. The video is so powerful, so I don't have to explain anything at all. So basically that uh, I'm, I'm Dean, I'm Dean Chong, and welcome to Aquadenture Water Park live in Fremont. So uh, <laughs> I'm part of the Rethink Disposable and uh, we Rethink Disposable uh, partnership or working with city and county to help small businesses transition any single use footwear for dining to reusable. As, meant, as Grace mentioned before, there's no cost for that. So I am so excited to work with Jimmy, a manager of the Aqua Adventure and transitioning all the single use items to reusable. For example, like I have a single plastic sauce cup. We are replacing with a stainless steel sauce cup. A paper boat that for flies or anything over here to a basket. Also, we can a plastic utensil to a stainless steel fork. Especially over here. Over here is a pizza box. Imagine if you have like hundreds, 200 customer order this per day, you will generate a lot of charge over here. Instead of using the paper uh, pizza box, we are replacing with a reusable one over here. We got a nice cover that will protect the food, keep the food warm, prevent all the whatever the bugs that try to get to the <laughs> delicious food over here. So, Jimmy, thank you for uh, joining us and thank you for onboarding with all the reusable. Can you tell everyone? A little bit. Absolutely. So, uh, my name is Jimmy Dilks. I'm one of the managers here at the Aqua Mental Water Park. I've been with the city of Fremont uh, just about uh, just just it comes to my 10 year anniversary. So um, I started as a part time seasonal employee and, and worked my way up um, the, the ranks, if you would. Uh, and a big part of that was just um, making economical, good economical decisions, you know, that that saved the city money. Um, although we are a city run water park, we're not subsidized by any taxpayer money. So we actually uh, we, we run this as a, a business and we put whatever money we make back into our department. Um, so with that being said, um, our, our recreation department is in, a, in the same department, community services as the um, um, environmental services. So we have a very good relationship with Jamie and Gino, and uh, they are always coming and knocking on my door and tell me that I'm not compliant or I need to be more compliant because <laughs> You know, citizens of the of, of Fremont holds you know the, the businesses in the city to a higher standard. So, um, <clears throat> with that being said, you know, being a, a bottom line guy, it was kind of tough to um, you know make the adjustment. You know, when you're you're talking straws, you know, a regular plastic straw is like two tenths of a penny, where you know a compostable one is a penny, right? So, um, but I think the big thing is is that um, actually COVID, the pandemic, ha had kind of put things into perspective with us, um, just 
one being, you know, inflation and everything's gone up and, and passing on that, um, you know, passing on the, you know, the expenses to the customer. Um, like I said, we, we're not subsidized by any taxpayer money. So we do get a lot of people saying, hey, you know, your prices are high. So we have to be conscious of that. But uh, with everything going up in the, in the restaurant, you know, food and beverage market, it's been easier, easier transition for us. Um, so last year, we, um, before we think came along, we decided to go compostable, uh, which was a big step for us. Um, so we moved everything into eco products and, and what was very excited about that. And Gino and Jamie and all environmental service was ex excited because we could say that we were going compostable. Well, the pandemic hit in the middle of it and the supply chain got us. So in the middle of last summer, all our plan of going fully compostable kind of fell apart um, just because we couldn't get what we had originally like lined up. So, um, and then this, this off season, uh, Jamie and Dean came in and said, Hey, what do you think about this? And like, I could attest, you know, I that converting everything to reusables was kind of like the last thought, you know, um, but they did everything for me. Um, you know, I was pretty shocked when they came and said, Hey, we have a reusable pizza box. Um, I was very, very skeptical at the beginning. Um, but, uh, you know, after, uh, you know, like we're just finished our first week of operation for the summer and the pizza boxes are hit not only with, with, you know, the guests, but with our staff. Um, so we, um, we're plugging right along, you know, just to kind of give you kind of, a, a um, some parameters, we, you know, we're uh, open about just under hundred days a year. Um, we have, we average about 860 guests, um, a day. And uh, our, typically our revenue falls anywhere between 500, 600,000 in those hundred days. So um, it's a very fast paced operation. So, you know, getting staff trained is, is probably our biggest opportunity. Um, and so this is kind of a learning curve for them too, just because we've added, you know, some, some you know, threw some curveballs at them, if you would, but they seem very susceptible, you know, that they, they're on board, right? Because at the end of the day, it's gonna save the earth. It's going to save us money, um, which I'm really excited about. Pizza boxes are anywhere between 50 and 75 cents per box. Um, and that's if you can get them. Because um, right now, I just was on US Foods looking and I can't even get a pizza box right now. So um, not only am I saving money, I'm, I actually have a product that I can use. <laughs> and I don't have to worry about supply chain. So um, and just to kind of give you guys a just uh, we, we go anywhere on the weekends, a busy weekend, we'll go through hundred to 150 pizzas a weekend. So, um, you know, you put that in your calculator and, and figure out what we're saving. And, uh, you know, like I said, being a, you know, a restaurant operator in this, you know, tough time, we're always looking at the bottom line, but it was very, very nice to make the transition and Dean and his team were, you know, made it seem as seamless as, you know, as possible. Um, like I think <laughs> he tried to track me down on more than one occasion, um, and he would just show up and be like, Hey, here's your delivery. And I'm like, Oh, great. Okay. Here it is. You know? So, um, but no, I can't thank you guys enough. And, and, you know, I, if, if you are, you know, if you own a business or a restaurant and you, you know, don't think about it, just consult with these guys because they will do the, do the legwork and they will line you up and set you in the right direction. So. Thanks, Jimmy. And we talked a little bit earlier today. You know what? And also everyone, we did not script that at all. That is from Jimmy's own mind. <laughs> so we really appreciate it. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about um, like other water parks and the possibility of, of doing this as well in other places in Alameda County. Um, you're from Dublin, right? I'm born and raised. Yeah, okay. So we're calling out Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I think, yeah, no. And, and honestly, I think it's just, it's the fear of something new, you know, but these red baskets, you know, it, they make it a lot easier, you know, and at the end of the day, we are doing less trash pickups, um, you know, not only in trash and compostable, because all those pizza boxes we were, you know, putting in the compostable. So we were, they were picking up, you know, two, three times a week, where now we probably could cut back to, you know, one or maybe two, you know, at most. So yeah. um, it's a win-win, you know, it really is. So um yeah, no, if you are, if you are a city run water park, I give these guys a shot because they, uh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> so that's amazing. And that's a great segue uh, to our next um, section of this webinar, which is almost wrapping up. So we do have two calls 
calls to action, actually three. One of them is to please, please support businesses that also are supporting reusable. So Cam and Delhi, Aqua Adventure, Malaya Tea Room, um, please go and support them. Um, if you are a business and if you're interested in speaking with Rethink Disposable, please contact me, Grace Lee, um, at rethinkdisposable at cleanwater.org. Um, we are active in um, the listed um, locations here, but if you are outside of these locations, um, feel free to shoot me an email. Maybe there's something simple that we can talk about and we can work on, um, or I can refer you to another organization that does similar work. Um, Justin, I'll let you take the, the right call to action. Um, yeah, so, you know, if you are in Alameda County and interested in getting more involved in our work, we are actually right now in the thick of working on our next contract with Rethink Disposable. So it's a good, a good time to um, step up and, and let's just have a conversation about what you'd like to do in your city. And um, we are open to a lot of different ways of working together, including contributing funds, including um, you know, that can go toward a more, more increased presence in terms of our field reps on the ground or in terms of increased uh, incentives available. Uh, really, we just wanna open the conversation and try to, and the other thing, even if you don't, you're not ready to take that step, if you know of businesses, like Grace was saying, if you know of businesses that um, have an opportunity, reach out to me and let me know and we can put them on our list just to reach out in a friendly way and, you know, offer, these services. So uh, my contact information is on the slide. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. And we have a few more minutes um, left for Q&A. Um, Steph, did you want to pull out some questions for us? Yeah, so great questions, everybody. And since we may not get to all, if folks have more questions, should they email you, Grace, after yes. the webinar? Please okay. do. Yeah, so, so Grace putting her email in the chat, but uh, let's just um, maybe address one. Chris was asking, say for the water park, how do you recover the, the reusable pizza boxes and just make sure they don't walk away, end up in the trash, all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I can jump in, Jimmy, if you wanted to jump in as well. I mean, signage is huge, right? Signage is huge and a lot of, uh, a lot of these pizzas that are going out on the weekends are to our parties and we have party huts and we have party hosts. So we are, you know, not only do we have the signage and the bus tubs and the carts that were supplied by, but we have the, the opportunity to um, have hosts go around and collect that as well. So, and I think, you know, they're, they're big enough for people and they look expensive. <laughs> so it would be, it'd be something that you wouldn't want to throw away. Maybe take home with you. <laughs> not throw away. Right. It's pretty hard to hide in a bathing suit though, if you want to walk yeah. away with it. <laughs> I'd also say the trash cans we put in, we made sure they were, the openings were just small enough that the pizza boxes and the trays couldn't fit in. So even if someone felt like doing that, it wouldn't fit. Perfect. Yeah, I think another um, another business that Rethink worked with had the baskets that the water park also uses, and they had them kind of mounted permanently onto a trash can so people would put them, stack them up there rather than putting them in the trash can. So definitely concern. Yeah, there was, and Cassie also was asking if um, in Santa Barbara where they tried to launch reusables, businesses had concerns about theft. Is, is that a concern you run into a lot, Grace? And, and how do you? You know, that does happen. That does happen in, in any business, you know, there's product loss from theft or it breaks or they kind of just disappear. Um, but again, signage is really important um, and just kind of regular restocking. Usually businesses will have to restock anyways every year. Um, um, but what we found is that overall, it's still a savings, even if you're restocking like 10% of your reusables. Um, but definitely um, signage is really important in that sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And regarding savings is um, was also a question. Savings from avoided waste disposal costs. Is that how big does that figure in versus say savings from not the recurring purchasing of disposables? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, a lot of businesses actually share their trash areas with other businesses. So that one is kind of harder to sparse out. Um, for institutions, um, for example, when we worked with Palo Alto Unified School District, the majority of their savings came from reduced trash collection. Um, so it, it can be very, very significant. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Couple of questions were about just um, how do we define reusables and say the different types. I know we showed a few just now, but say are the non-plastic ones as a rule more expensive than, than um, plastic ones like say metal or such. Uh, do you want to address? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, plastic is still a subsidized industry um, and it's cheaper. Um, so, um, at times that is what we go with because it hits that price point. Um, at times we will use uh, plastic reusables um, even though it's petroleum based and there are a lot of environmental factors and um, impacts to uh, fence line communities because of the um, petroleum um, product. Um, but at times it's what works, right? So it's light, it doesn't break. Um, there are, um, like in Anne's kitchen, there are a lot of elderly working in the kitchen. So they need something very, very light. And sometimes plastic is the best option. As long as it's reusable, it will always by far be better than a single use disposable. I've also heard about the argument that plastic is often ugly enough for people not to want to steal it. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, yeah. Um, I know we have only a minute left. Um, uh, there, there was a, a, a comment or just a desire to talk a bit more about takeout uh, reusables, which of course is quite different from dine-in and it seems like a, a whole separate webinar. But um, do um, both you and Justin, do you wanna address that question? I know Rethink also addresses takeout reusables. So if you work with businesses and they wanna set up a system for take takeout, that's also something you can get help with. Yeah, Justin, you wanna take this one? Sure, I'll just say from our perspective at Stop Waste, we want to um, to help with all of, all of these solutions, including takeout. So um, part of, I mentioned the RFQ we did last year, part of that effort is to attract more businesses that offer takeout solutions. Um, we know of several, some, some are located in the Bay Area and we have good relationships with them. So I think in those cases, um, you know, if our reps in the field, if the Rethink team encounters an opportunity for takeout, um, dine-in is sometimes the low-hanging fruit. It's a great place to start out and make have an impact. Um, if there's a takeout opportunity, we will be prepared to um, connect with partners who can offer that service. There are some that offer reusables um, and they will handle all the logistics. So it's sort of akin to a linen, a linen service, right? If you need dishwashing to be done offsite, if you need the reusables to be taken and taken out and cleaned and replaced every morning, there are companies that will offer that um, usually for like an, on a monthly fee type of a service. Great, I was just actually spotting some communication about just that in the chat. So thanks all for being so active here. Grace, back to you for a wrap up. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I don't wanna keep you any longer, it's a minute over. But if you have any more questions, please reach out to me. Um, Lee at cleanwater.org and um, we will be sending out answers to other questions that we didn't get to and also the webinar recording um, and if you want to be put on the wait list for Alameda County Business um, please reach out to Rethink Disposable as well. Thanks everyone have a great rest of the afternoon.